Hi Gokdina, in today's video I'm going to show you a couple of examples relating to compound interest, um, the formula that we use to calculate compound interest and I suppose a couple of, of ways that we actually see it used in everyday life which is really important. So the two main things that come up when we talk about compound interest are related to uh, taking out loans in the bank or the credit union, maybe a mortgage as well, or um, investing money in uh, financial institutions. So that's kind of the two ways that we actually um, relate to compound interest. The second thing to note is that the difference between compound interest and what we would call simple interest is compound interest, the interest is added on at the end of each year. So every year the interest that is calculated, whether it be on a loan or on an investment, is added on before the next year's interest is calculated. When dealing with loans, we talk about annual percentage rate, um, and that's written in short as APR. And when we're talking about investments, the interest is known as annual equivalent rate, and that's AER. Again, one of the ways that I like to remember this is the P, although I know it does not stand for this, but I think about it like pay so it's the interest that you're paying to the bank because obviously it's a loan so you're owing them more money whereas a e or i think about the e standing for earn so it's the extra interest that i'm earning in my bank account okay so the next thing i want to talk to you about then is the actual formula that you use for compound interest so technically if you wanted to you could just work out the interest each year and then keep adding it on and work out the interest again and add it on. But that does take a long time if you have to work it out for five, six, seven years. So thankfully there is a nice formula that we can use. This formula is written differently in some textbooks, but it is in the formula booklets on page 30. And the way it's written in the formula booklets is like this. So F is equals to P multiplied by one plus I to the power of T. Now, like I said, I've I've written it differently in the past. It's written differently in different textbooks, but that's the actual formula that you're going to see written in your formula tables. Really, it's not about just looking in your formula tables. You need to understand what each section is. And if you've learned it a slightly different way, that's absolutely no problem once you know which each what each section stands for. So, first bit up here, T, I sometimes refer to this as N, is basically the number of... Um, number of years or it might be sometimes months depending on the question or payments and stuff like that but generally it's the number of years the time basically i is the interest and you need to make sure that that's written as a decimal one is obviously just one p stands for the principal and again that can be a bit confusing that may basically means the original amount that you've either borrowed or invested and f is the final amount so the total amount that you owe to the bank in your loan or the total amount that you get from your investment at the end of your couple of years Okay, so our first example is a nice straightforward one just to start off with. So it says Niall borrows 2,500 for five years at an APR of 2.5%. Calculate the total amount he will need to repay the bank. So basically what we're trying to work out is the final amount that he will actually have paid back after his five years um, from this loan. So um, first thing we're going to do is write down what we know. So we know our principal amount or our starting amount is 2,500. We know that the, our time is equals to five years and we know our APR is equals to 2.5%. And what we're trying to work out is our final amount. So if we go to our formula booklets, or again, hopefully some of us know this off by heart now, we've got F is equals to P multiplied by 1 plus I raised to the power of T. So let's fill in what we have. So we've got P, which is 2,500, multiplied by 1 plus I. Now remember, I needs to be a decimal, so I need to change this to a decimal. So it's going to be 0 0.025 raised to the power of T, which is 5. 
I can tidy up my bracket. Oops, multiplied by 1.025 raised to the power of 5. Now this is the bit where your calculator is essential. So please make sure that you do have your calculators for these exams or you will be very stuck. So we're going to do 2500 multiplied by 1.025 and that bracket raised to the power of 5. If you're not sure how to do that on your calculator, please ask because that's really important. And the figure that's going to come out in my calculator is 2,828. And again, because we're dealing with money, we always round two decimal places unless told otherwise, 0.52. And that's your answer. So that's the total amount of money that he will actually have had to pay back over the course of the five years. So the this is made up of obviously the 2,500 that he originally took out in his loan plus the extra interest, um, which has added up to 2,800 and 28 euro and 52 cent. Okay, so in this example, it's a little bit trickier. Um, we're told that 10,000 is invested at 3% AER, but then at the end of the first year, a certain amount of money is withdrawn. And then we're also told that the interest rate in the second year changes. So unfortunately, we can't use our formula straight away to answer the entire question because it needs to be kind of split up into two separate bits. So it needs to be split up into the first year where at the end of that year the money is withdrawn and then it needs to be split up into a separate kind of question for the second year. And there's loads of different ways of laying this out. One way I like to lay it out is using a table. And I'm not very exact with what exactly what's in the table, but it just helps me to visualise it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my table like so. So the first bit of my table is my um, starting amount. Um, so that's going to be the amount that I'm, I suppose, beginning at the start of each year, uh, pardon the messiness. And the next thing that I'm gonna put in here is the A, E, or. So that's the percentage interest that I um, am being charged on this, uh, or is being um, added to this investment. I'm then gonna put in the letter I. And the reason I'm doing that is because that's gonna help me put it in as a decimal, so I don't forget to put it in as a decimal. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is just put in my um, um, formula. The next bit then is going to be the end of year figure. And the last bit then is going to be any uh, withdrawals. So if there's any withdrawals coming out, I can keep an eye on that. Okay, step one, I'm going to start off with the amount at the start of year one, which is €10,000. And we know that the AEOR, or the percentage AEOR, for year one is 3%. That as a decimal is going to be 0 0.03. Now I'm going to use my formula, okay? So it's going to be 10,000 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.03 raised to the power of 1. Now that's the bit that some students get confused with. So if you can see that there, 1. The reason why I'm only doing it for one year is because I'm only working it out for one year. So just, although I'm kind of doing it over two years, remember we need to split this up into two questions. So I'm going to do 10,000 10, multiplied by 1 plus uh, 0.03 and that's raised to the power of 1 and that's going to give me 10,300 so at the end of the first year that's how much money I have in the account so it's gone up by 300 euro however I'm withdrawing money at the end of that year so I need to withdraw the 1,450 euro so I'm taking that out because I want to go and buy myself something nice so when that's taken out at the start of year two then I'm going to have 8,850 euro in my bank account and now we're starting it all again, except this time the AEOR is 3.5%. So I'm going to write that in there. That as a decimal is going to be 0 0.035. Be really careful with that. Some people tend to write that down as 0 0.35. But remember, you have to go two hops to the left. Then my formula, and again, be very careful. It's not 10,000 anymore. It's 8,850 multiplied by 1 plus... 0 0.035 sorry uh, raised the power of 1 because it's for one year again 
So I'm going to pop that into my calculator and that is going to give me an end of year figure of 9,159 euro and 75 cent. And there's no further withdrawals, so therefore that is the value of my investment at the end of the second year. Okay guys, so example number three is again a little bit trickier and here we're being told that Tom has invested a certain amount of money at an AER of 6% for five years and his final investment is worth €2,500. So they're not telling us how much money he's originally invested, they're just telling us how much money he's ended up with. So to start off this question, I'm going to write down what I know. So the first thing I'm kind of told is my AER. And that's 6%. The next thing I'm told is the time or how long it's in for. So I'm going to write down T is equals to 5. The other thing I'm told is his final investment. So we're going to say final for F is equals to 2,500. And what I'm trying to work out is the principal. I'm trying to work out how much he started off with. So once you've got that all figured out, let's write down our formula again. So the final amount of money that we're left with is equals to P multiplied by 1 plus I raised to the power of T. And we're going to pop in what we know. So we know that F is equals to 2,500. We don't know P, but we know that I, remember it's the decimal form of this, so it's going to be 0 0.06 raised to the 5. Now, this is the bit where students get stuck. I need you to put your algebra hats on now. So we want to get the P by itself. In order to get the P by itself, I need to get rid of all that other stuff over to the right-hand side of it. And I want you to imagine this is a really simple question. Imagine that was actually P multiplied by 2, and it's equals to 2,500. So that means 2 times P gives me all that stuff on the left. And the way of going backwards is instead of, well, at the moment, let's say the number 2 will be multiplying by P, so the opposite will be to divide by P. Okay, so instead of it being the lovely number 2, it's just all this weird looking stuff on the right hand side. So we're going to write down, okay, we're going to divide both sides by this. So P is equals to 2,500 divided by all that lovely stuff. And then all we need then is a uh, helpful hand of our calculator. So we're going to pop that into our calculator. And that is going to give us 1,868. And we're just going to round it to two decimal places. So it's going to be 0.145. So then if we round that to two decimal places, it's going to end up being 1,5. So that means that the principal amount, the bit that the, the amount that they started off with at the beginning of this investment was one thousand eight hundred and sixty eight euro and fifteen cent, and over the five years with six percent AE or they ended up with two thousand five hundred euro.